I'm Christine Brown, Meet in the Middle on a Tuesday. It's actually Cinco de Mayo. Pretty nice day outside, a little windy, but sun is shining. What more could we ask for? Hey, I want to let you know if you're a Sean Hannity fan, and I would imagine quite a few people that are listening are Sean Hannity fans, that he, uh, the entirety of his program airs from one to four. So it just set him back a bit. So uh, all is good there. Yes. Um, you know, um, as we went into the break, I said that there's something that is that creates fifteen million dollars worth of revenue in the Tri Cities. John McKay, a producer, would you have any idea what that is? I could probably take a stab at it, but I'm I'm intrigued. You are intrigued. Well, you kind of probably are sitting in a spot. You get to cheat on this a little bit because you're sitting right across from our guest. Our guest today is Hector Cruz. Hector works for Visit Tri-Cities, and Hector, what's your uh, title, job title? Yes, I'm a, a director of sports development. Sports development. Hmm. Yes. So basically, when we say $15.3 million, we're talking about people coming here for the purpose of sports? Yes, so people are coming in here to attend a sports tournament, and they're spending their dollars here in our community. Wow, so we're talking about weekends, Baseball. that type of thing. Yes. Lots of it. <laughs> Lots of it here, plenty of it here in our community, yes. Wow, 15 million. How many events um, do you help organize on an annual basis? You know, usually right now, for, for instance, for 2015, we're looking at over 50, 50 events. We're about uh, just a little over 50, 50? events here. Yeah. Well, give me, put that into perspective for me. What was it maybe five years ago? You know, uh, a few years ago, with probably half of that, you know, we were probably in you know, 25, 30 events uh, being hosted here in our community. Now it's just grown significantly here the last, uh, within the last five years. Well, the question would be, why? Why? What's happened? Yeah, well, you know, um, you know we, there's, there's a lot of great things that are happening here in our community. One thing is uh, we're part of the Tri-City Sports Council. That's a, a marketing arm of Visit Tri-Cities. And our sports council consists of about 40 members here locally in our community includes athletic directors, city parks and recreation departments, our s local sports clubs, um, and there's also uh, our professional teams are on there. We're all sports-minded people looking at bringing sports tournaments to our community. So we have a nice forum where we're able to, to out, you know, create an outreach where we can, we can bring those tournaments here locally. Well, what do we have here that maybe other people, what makes us so competitive? Well, you know, um, we've had a, our, our city partners have done a great job in creating a, an infrastructure in our community um, and, and making sure that we have sports venues to host those events. Uh, that's one thing sports event owners are looking for is, is you know, what, do you have the venues that can, you know, that can host our events? And uh, we definitely have that within, in each of our cities in, in you know, Kennaway, Pasco, Richland, we, they have those, those um, state-of-the-art venues. What are you talking about? What do you mean? So, so for instance, uh, we have uh, Southridge Sports and Events Complex. We have a you know a multi-use uh, um, fields out there where they can host soccer, lacrosse, baseball, softball. They have the indoor pavilion there. We also have the the city of Pasco has their Pasco Sporting Complex, um, and you know they have six fields out there right next door to it. They have the Tri Cities Youth Soccer Association Complex, where where they can host at least fifteen full size fields. Um, fifteen fields 15 at fields one time. At one time. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize it was that yeah. many. And it, we're talking sports tourism. Our guest today is Hector Cruz. He works for Visit Tri-Cities, and basically it's his job to go out and get some of those big events. I want to tell you, if you want to join our conversation, we'd love to take your call. Here's that number. It's 509-547-8726, and we'll be able to add you to the conversation. All right, Hector, so how, how do we get events here? What, what do you mean your job is to do? What do you do? How do you do that? Yeah, so as I mentioned, our sports council works with us too, and, and we're, out, you know, we're out promoting the Tri-Cities as a premier sports destination. So we have all of our members are out there promoting the area in whatever specific club that they're involved in to, to, to let them know that you know, we can host events here. Um, but more to that, we also attend uh, Visit Tri-Cities, our staff. We go out and attend trade shows throughout the year. I just returned from a trade show in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where we were out meeting with event owners, and this was a part of the National Association of Sports Commissions. We had a, the opportunity to, to uh, promote Tri-Cities uh, to, uh, to sports event owners one-on-one -on -one and have that time to, to, to really show them what we have to offer here. 
So that's where you go from 25 events maybe like five years ago to 50 events now in 2015. Yes, no, definitely. You know, a few years ago we just attended one trade show and now we're currently attending four national trade shows because now Tri-Cities, we're, we're able to compete on a national level. We're able to bring these uh, bigger events. So now we get on the map. And you were telling us uh, during the break, we had a we had an extra conversation. Let me just share it with people. But one of the biggest events was softball a couple weeks ago, and you had 140 teams. 140 teams, people, not just 140 people. That's an incredible, about, you know, how many people are coming in, do you think, to the Tri-Cities on a yearly basis? You know, for that one, uh, the NSA, that was a, a, a state, uh, or excuse me, a softball championship event that we were discussing here. And for that one, it's a little over 5,000 people that we estimate coming in just from out of town. That doesn't include our locals, but 140 teams from out of, you know, that, that's a significant amount of people coming in here to our community. Well, when you think about them going and, you know, buying a burger and going to the mall or whatever, that, that is, has a significant impact. Yes. So we always look, yeah, we're always, look, everybody's always looking to get bigger. What? What else do we need? What are we lacking to kind of move to that next tier? You know, Christine, one, one thing that we need to take more advantage of is our natural resource here with the, with the, the Snake River, the Columbia, and the Yakima. We, we have a great natural resource here in our, in our, in our area, and uh, we, need to, we need to look at hosting more events. Of course, we have the, you know, the Tri-Cities Water Follies, and we have some other great events on it, but there's a lot more that we can be uh, tapping into whether it's jet skiing races or m working more and, and growing, uh, you know, getting some more wakeboard competitions out there or getting more rowing, kayaking, canoeing. Uh, there's, there's a lot more events that we can host on the river. All right, so a river would be one of those. What yes. about a what about a swimming pool? <laughs> yes, an Olympic sized <laughs> swimming pool. Does that make a difference? Yes, that also does too. You know, we, you know, that's one thing that we 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 need here. You know, it's definitely getting you know getting that facility where we can host uh, more more major events and getting the the right correct size of swimming pool too. That would definitely help us with our overall portfolio. What uh, what are some really unusual events that have been held here in the Tri Cities that people might not you know I mean baseball softball that's soccer that's pretty standard what else what else are we well, do you know we do we do some a lot of uh, there's different running events as you see that uh, there's some groups here with our Three Rivers Road under they post some some different running events um, and also we posted um, uh, you, you've seen uh, the Badger Mountain Challenge for instance where there's over you know they're they're running over a uh, hundred miler you know there's people out here running a hundred miles that's that's you know. That's crazy. It's crazy to just imagine, <laughs> but we have that going on just here in Badger Mountain. Um, but but there's definitely a, a lot of other a lot of other groups that we can that that are unusual out there that we could bring into. I was just talking to my staff this morning. Uh, we were looking at there's a an actual association for cornhole. You know that's like um, uh, the the sport of throwing a, a bean bag. You'll see that at, at tailgating where they throw bean bags into a hole and and they they made a sport out of it. You know so there's wow. So they have like that. yeah that's crazy competition <laughs> yeah. competition and, yeah and all sorts of, of different events that we can bring into. Well, we've definitely got the infrastructure. I think people are pretty pretty welcoming as well. But here's my question. Do we have enough hotel space? Well, you know, uh, we, we, we do have right now currently a few hotels actually going up in our community. So there are times right now that we have what we call compressed weekends where we are, uh, we are full, uh, such as that tournament when the state, uh, uh, the softball state uh, softball tournament comes into town. We do fill up our hotel rooms in, and teams are having to stay in outlying areas. Uh, so we do have, a, you know, a need during those compressed weekends. Um, currently, right now, we promote over it's about 300, uh, 3,600 guest rooms citywide is what we're promoting here. But that that attracts event owners to come here to the Tri Cities and want to host their event here because we have the support and we have the hotel inventory to support that. Hmm. Um, what uh, you know, does our location play a part in terms of people wanting to have a, some kind of a tournament or something here? You know, our location plays a, a real major part. Um, when you look at us at a map, it's it's great to be able to show an event owner that our our central location to the whole northwest. Um, you know, we're just a few hours, uh, you know, from Spokane, Seattle, Portland. Um, then you also can draw people from from uh, further further east, uh, going into Boise. Um, also into Montana, uh, so event owners are able to draw more teams to participate in their tournament. So that, yeah. that plays a big part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Hector, do you like your job? Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it would really be a fun job. Yes, yes. Uh, promoting sports in, in for our community is great. You know, we, we have uh, a great community to be promoting here in yeah. our area. Well, you seem to do a good job, Hector. I appreciate that. Thank you. You know, there's something else that Visit Tri-Cities does. Oh, people, I'm sorry. I'm really biased here because I am a member of the board. That's but okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's a, a an email, an email blast, basically, that's sent out on Thursday morning that talks about events coming up for the weekend. So if you are one of the few people in my opinion, who say, oh, there's nothing to do here in the Tri-Cities, well, you better get hooked up to this uh, email that comes out on Thursdays from Visit Tri-Cities. So, Hector, how do we sign up for that? Yeah, if you go to our webpage, it's www.visittri-cities.com, and then you, you go on our homepage, you'll click on a link. Uh, it's in the center there. You'll see e-news e-newsletter button uh, it'll it'll say your, uh, uh, that to subscribe to our e-newsletter e just to click there you click on that and then that'll get you subscribed to our your weekend starts here newsletter which we send out every week on a weekly basis and it keeps you updated on on what there is to see and do in, in the tri-cities oh i love that i get it and i look at it every week i think it's a great uh event one last question for you before we let you go hector what are you working on right now uh, so right now we have we have quite a few you know just coming back from that from that conference um, we got a, a whole list right now of, of different what we call leads um, groups that we're looking at working um, working with um, so um, it includes everything from right now from basketball we have some lacrosse um, more lacrosse events that we're we're looking at bringing into our community as that's another growing sport here in our community so um, a lot of a lot of things to look forward to. Um, it, also, we, we just uh, we got awarded a, a state championship for volleyball in November. So there's a committee that's working out there, making sure that that event's going to uh, be successful, and, and we look forward to that coming up here in November. So a lot of wheels are turning for sports tourism. That's really great, Hector Hector Cruz from Visit Tri Cities. Thanks so much for joining us. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a break here. But if you've got some calls, you want to make some comments, hey, we'll put you on the air. <laughs> yes, well, I think it's turned into a, kind of a mega advertising day, that's for sure. But actually, May 5th is celebrated in the United States and in parts of Mexico because it is the day that the kind of tattered Mexican army uh, unlikely was able to be victorious over French forces at the Battle of uh, Puebla. And that was May 5th, 1862. Mm. So... I think, you know, what's interesting is that Americans have kind of taken on this, um, you know, Cinco de Mayo as just, I mean, come on, it's just another great excuse to celebrate, isn't it? Yes. Well, <laughs> and some of the people that we work with are planning some special celebrations as we speak. Well, yeah, most people, most people are, so people are going to have chips and salsa today, whatever, but if you want to think back to this battle that was happening in 1862 and underdogs winning. Okay, I like that as a new definition for Cinco de Mayo, that um, it's uh, underdogs winning. You know, and that brings up an interesting point. It kind of makes you think sometimes how different holidays have varied or wandered away from their original meaning. Uh, you look at a lot of different holidays and how, I hate to say commercialized, but when you look into the true meaning of the holiday, you're thinking, I had no idea that had actually occurred. Yeah. And it's a lot further. Yes, yes. Perception is not always reality. People always get Memorial Day, you know, I was going to say screwed up, but uh, confused. And Veterans Day and then the presidential holidays as well. So that's kind of interesting. Hey, there's another holiday coming up. And it's, um, I'm going to give you a, some advance warning that it's Mother's Day is this Sunday. Mm -hmm. And I think if you asked any mother... I'm a mother, and I'm going to speak for all mothers today, that having a day in which your children or other people around you share and support and tell you thank you and acknowledge you and do something special for you is really awesome. So, yes. um, you know, if you can't remember to call your mother on Sunday, I suggest that you put in, um, uh, you know, a note 
on your calendar on your phone. It's <laughs> turned into the greatest memory assistant. Um, and call your mom on Sunday. Can't do it on Sunday. Call her on Saturday. Wow, I can tell you that if my kids are listening, if, if they're listening, they, 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 oh, I'm going to see them. Oh, okay. I'm going to see them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and it kind of brings up an interesting point that with the age of digital technology, you can't use the old excuse it used to be on certain holidays that before we had digital technology and cell phones, and I'm probably dating myself, but I remember there were times when everybody was trying to call their mother or their father on Mother's oh, Day or yeah, Father's Day, yeah. and the phone lines, all circuits are busy. Uh huh. Well, you can't do that anymore, so that's not an excuse. Well, that would be great. Uh, let me give you advance warning on something else, too. Remember that on Friday is Food Truck Fridays in downtown Pasco. And it's really uh, a great thing that's just developing right now where a bunch of food trucks will gather in the area of the Pasco Farmer's Market and uh, make some great food available for sale. So think about that on Friday. You know what else is coming up on Friday? I've got a great show that's planned on Friday because mm -hmm. it's in... Uh, in conjunction with the untapped blues and brews that's coming up on Saturday. So on Friday, I'm going to talk to a couple of people in our area that are making beer. And like Carly Templeton from Atomic Ale and Daniel Washam from Dee's Wicked Cider, uh, Sun River. And uh, talk to a couple of those people about what's happening that the Northwest just seems to be this huge mecca that we're turning into to... Uh, to get some beer going. But, you know, in the meantime, I got, I got, I'm running out of time here, so I want to share with you um, my thought for today. Yes. Don't put off joy. Ah, don't do it. Take that trip. Plan a family dinner. Go get a massage. Yeah, do the what you want to do. Live in the now and get it done. Just don't put off joy. I'm going to remember that towards the end of the day. Are you? See you, gang. You can finish up. I'm out. <laughs> no, no way. No, no. 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 Hey, what's coming up tomorrow on the show? Oh, we're going to talk about sexually transmitted disease, STDs. Mm. It's always, you know, can you believe we have been dealing with this for so many decades and we still have STD, sexually transmitted diseases that are a problem. Dr. Amy P Person from the Benton Franklin Health District is going to be here to talk about that. Also, guess what? Next week we're coming up on the filing period uh, for elected office and we'll talk to some people about, uh, I don't know, do you want to run for elected office? Hey, you know what? Had a lot of fun today. Let's do it tomorrow.